Thank you, Mr. President of the European Parliament. Stimați membrii ai Honorable members of the European Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here today in the European Parliament. I'd like to thank you for this invitation to take part in the debates around the future of the European Union. The Union has long been marked, but in particular over the last decade, by multiple challenges which have tested our cohesion and unity from the financial and economic crisis, the migration crisis, terrorist attacks, to the rising up of populist movements. This decade has been one in which the Union has had to learn how to adapt on the hoof. Against the backdrop of those challenges, the Union has been marked by the search for a common vision, defined through the need to achieve a smart balance between the specific realities of every member state and the wish to consolidate together a genuine union, a union that looks to the future. The main positive finding in this period is that there is a factor that unites us, a European identity based on shared principles, values and interests. And these values, these common values, must constantly be rediscovered, reappreciated and given their due value back again because the universalism of values lies precisely in their ability to regenerate. And now we are coming into a new chapter in the rise and consolidation of the European project in which we need to come up with a new vision with regard to the future of the Union. In that perspective, I would firmly plead for unity for cohesion, for solidarity, and for a common European path in the course of our efforts to consolidate that European project. The central key to our approach must remain unity. For Romania, this principle embodies the very essence of the European project, which gives it this ability to cope with multiple challenges as the Union has been contending with hitherto. The European Union is a project that's on the move. New realities, both at member state level as globally, require the development and consolidation of the European project and in no case should it lead us to challenge the fundamental principles on which the European project has been built. A powerful union should not be achieved to the detriment of unity. We need an inclusive union which leaves no member state or no citizen behind. From that point of view, the idea of a multi-speed Europe or a union of concentric circles cannot offer a solution to the extent that we wish to preserve its unitary and indivisible character as a European Union. And that is what imbues it with value and credibility in its relations with the rest of the world. President Juncker last year said that Europe needed to get its breath back to breathe with both its lungs, that on the east and that on the west. 
I do hope that our future together will demonstrate to us similarly that Europe has just one heart, a heart that beats in us all, that unites us in the east as in the west, in the north as in the south, and which leads to our citizens quite naturally identifying and defining themselves as Europeans. We must take up this common ideal for ourselves and, if necessary, to adapt ourselves and to recalibrate the instruments which will allow us to achieve this. I am confident that the new step on which the European Union is embarking in 2019 and in which Romania, in its capacity as the rotating presidency of the Council of the European Union, uh, will prepare together with the other member states and the European institutions will be a fertile future. I'm confident that the Sibiu summit to be held on the 9th of May 2019 will be a benchmark in planning a future involving a more powerful, more united and more cohesive and more democratic union. This hinges on our strength, on our intelligence and our will. As member states, European institutions and European citizens to make that objective a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sibiu summit is an important stage in the consolidation of the foundations of that future, a common future, a democratic future and an optimistic future. The future of the European Union cannot be built but through the participation and direct involvement an active involvement of the citizens of Europe and I would like Sibiu to be a moment of dawning awareness on the part of the citizens of Europe. Citizens, the citizens want to gauge tangible palpable results. They want good news about peace, security and prosperity. Similarly, the citizens need to see that we are working to protect and consolidate the chief symbols of the Union, the Euro currency, the internal market, the Schengen space and freedom of movement. At the same time, our citizens need more cohesion, but cohesion is not simply the ambition of the new member states alone, which are experiencing lower levels of economic convergence, but also it's a necessity for the older members of the Union. Cohesion is unity. It, it speaks of common action action consorti uh, concerted and coordinated at the EU level. We must go back to the main essence of the principle of cohesion as is reflected in the Treaty of the Union, namely the converging power of a community of vision and action which can create added value for the Union as a whole. The European Union today finds, it finds itself in a stage of economic recovery. This would not have been possible in the absence of common vision and action to create and consolidate an economic and monetary union. Economic security is just as important as border security, while the prosperity of the Union depends on our ability to ensure a powerful, capable economic and monetary union that can meet the expectations of the citizens, but which can also cope with new challenges. With a view to achieving that objective, we need 
comprehensive decisions and policies which guarantee the involvement of all member states in a common effort to create a more powerful, a more stable and a more competitive Eurozone. For Romania, membership of the Eurozone, as soon as possible, when all the conditions are met, is a fundamental national objective. This year, we are celebrating 25 years of the internal market. We have come a long way as regards the freedom and opportunity to travel, to study and to work elsewhere in the European Union for our citizens. We cannot imagine a European Union without a single market and without its four fundamental freedoms. The free movement of goods, the free movement of people, the free movement of services and the free movement of capital. We need a functioning, competitive and inclusive single market. A single market in which the citizens really feel its benefits in their day-to-day -day lives. At the same time, Europe is and must remain an international leader in many fields, above all with regard to the technological and digital revolution. Europe does have the capacity and the strength to transform itself into and to be a leader in connectivity, growth and stability, competitiveness, security and the improvement of the quality of life of all Europeans also depend on how ambitious and how resolute Europe is as regards digitalization, including research and innovation. At the same time, we must ensure that we adapt our workers better to the needs, requirements and changes in the single market to guarantee social progress and competitiveness go hand in hand. We must also be aware that the fact that society is changing digitally cannot be realized without huge investment in education and in acquiring the necessary skills. All citizens from whatever region or whatever social class must be engaged in this revolution, in this evolution. That must be our commitment, the commitment of Europe's leadership and in that diversity our continent will be strengthened in the global competition which will follow. We're talking of a future in which the Union will win back its own citizens by increasing their feeling of being in security here at home within the Union. The challenges which are brought about by migration and security are of paramount interest for us all. We must act to ensure that the European project can rebuild security for the citizens and to devote more attention to fighting terrorism and radicalization. We need to act. We need to become more proactive and we need to increase the EU's planning capabilities. The response to the crisis using contextual policies cannot be an efficient way of working and we need lasting solutions. The European Union must remain an area of free movement, one in which our citizens can move freely and can work anywhere 
in the EU's territory, where young people can travel, can study, and can thus benefit fully from one of the most visible and ambitious projects of European integration, namely the Schengen Zone. For Romania, membership of the Schengen Zone is an important objective. This step will appreciably contribute to the consolidation of the security of an entire area of free movement for the Union as a whole. The corollary of a safe and powerful union must be a bigger union because with size will come power. That notion is all the truer and all the more relevant in a global context which is highly competitive. And the Union's enlargement policy has clearly demonstrated the value arising from successive waves of new members which incontrovertibly have contributed to the prosperity and security of the continent. Enlarging the Union should not remain a desire merely for the generations to come. It must continue to be a real necessity in which candidate countries and potential candidate countries can anchor their ongoing reform efforts and can take on seriously and lastingly the values and principles of Europe. Honourable Members of the European Parliament, we cannot really be relevant globally if we cannot significantly influence the settings of our neighbourhood. Keeping the countries in our southern and eastern neighbourhood firmly anchored in the values of Europe and maintaining our uh, commitment to irreversible structural reform, working together with them, uh, depends on our ability to live up to the pledges we've given them. And last but not least, we're talking about a future in which the European Union will have a front of stage role on the international stage. A future in which the member states, based on shared interests and mutual solidarity, will support the assertion of the Union as a global player with a, de a decisive uh, contribution towards promoting a multilateral system which is based on rules. The implementation of the EU's global strategy has seen significant changes both in security and defence as in the consolidation of our political ties both within the EU and outside the EU. It's our responsibility to ensure that in the years to come the European Union will have the instruments it needs to meet new challenges. Ongoing initiatives in security and defence, common security and defence, based on close cooperation and the avoidance of parallel structures with NATO, the consolidation of the Union's resilience and that of its partners and the improvement of our strategic communication are all objectives which require greater attention and constant action. The consistency of the Union's policies in its neighbourhood, the preservation of a solid transatlantic partnership, the honouring of our commitments to enlargement uh, within agreed parameters and to institutional relations with the UN and the support for multilateralism are all virtues and areas in which the Union 
will find it needs to demonstrate that it can act efficiently. Distinguished members of the European Parliament, 11 years ago, when Romania joined the greater European family, I felt especially proud as a Romanian to be living through that important time for my country. Next year, when Romania for the first time assumes the presidency of the Council of the European Union, the Sibiu summit will be a crossroads moment for our European family. It's our duty, it's our responsibility to create Europe's future. Alongside every Romanian, I feel proud to be a citizen of Romania and, in equal measure, a citizen of Europe. Because national pride and European pride are not worn out concepts and they are not parallel realities. It's a conscious state which conserves and gives strength and content to those identities. Because Europe is part and parcel of our very fiber. A Europe that comes together from our diversity. A Europe that is based on the concept of unity in diversity. And thus, Europe is Romania, and Romania is Europe. 2018 is the centenary year of modern Romania, which for us all means not so much a backward-looking analysis of history, but much more plans for the future. In those 100 years, we have learned some important lessons, and uh, we have indeed gone through unhappy times. But the lesson of democracy is one of the most important of those lessons. And that is why we appreciate all the more the values of the European family. For that reason, Romania is a country which is deeply attached to the European project. We have a vibrant and dynamic society and one that is constantly changing. We are young democracy, which has the wherewithal to improve. Romanians are actively linked to civic values. I think that's demonstrated as clearly and can, as can be when there has been the need to speak up for the rule of law and democracy. Romanians have the will and the strength to go further down this European road that they have embarked on. It's about the ambition to overcome any obstacle, to remain firmly embedded in the greater European family to which we fundamentally belong. The young generation believes in Europe and is engaged in debates about our future in a positive and, above all, optimistic way. And the enthusiasm of these remarkable young people also feeds into our optimism about Europe's future. Nonetheless, this enthusiasm they have puts a particular obligation on us to be responsible. The advantage of this wave of enthusiasm means that Europe is in the front, li front line of thinking about how to protect 
democracy. Democracy is not just given to us, it requires ongoing responsibility to care for it, protect it and promote it. Yeah, uh, Romania at present is a dynamic country that looks to the future, that has rapidly embraced and worked on the new technological trends and digital services. One of Romania's companies has in recent years become a world leader in cyber defense and security. Moreover, a company begun by two young engineers this spring became Romania's first unicorn. In just six months, the company has tripled its value, reaching an evaluation of three billion euros, becoming a global leader in robotic software, automization, and artificial intelligence. Throughout Romania, from Yash to Timisoara, from Cluj to Bucharest, from Craiova to Constance, thousands of talented Romanian engineers, both men and women, are working to advance digital technologies, whether we're talking about connected cars or intelligent transport systems or 5G telecoms or the Internet of Things. They're researching and innovating in blockchain, spatial technology and digital agriculture. The data economy is the future and sectors of uh, the Romanian economy, information technology and communication technology and the creative sectors are becoming some of the most influential in terms of our GDP nationally and that of the Union as a whole. It should therefore not surprise anyone that Romania wishes to and is also able to contribute to consolidating the EU's global role in this field. Romania actively supports a union that invests in the security of its citizens. European unity is vital whenever we talk about consolidating the union's internal security. For Romania, as a member state that manages one of the longest external borders of the EU, security is a priority area in which we have demonstrated that we can perform in every respect. Today, we are capable of supplying security at the very highest standards for the Union as a whole as we, indeed we are already doing within NATO. As a member state of the Union, we will devote special importance to ongoing measures aimed at reducing the fragmentation of Europe's security space. It's our duty to protect all the citizens, irrespective of where they are, whether they're in Schengen member states or not. This is possible only through continuing to take an integrated approach to the external border of the EU. And all member states need to do that in respect of also using the latest generation of security instruments. Distinguished members of the European Parliament. The European Union was built on a desire which is as human as it is profound to experience peace on the European continent. That internal peace with all its component parts, which is to say cooperation between member states, the principle of the rule of law, fundamental rights and freedoms, diversity, prosperity, social standards and labour standards, all that has become an extremely valuable export. The time has come to go back to that model, which is 
heart of our very being and to show to our citizens that we have managed to create that together to see how we are together protecting peace and how the need for peace today is in the interest of all citizens. I always have in the back of my mind the very topical words once spoken by Jean Monnet to quote in French, there is no future for the peoples of Europe than that of union, end of quote. I urge us all to maintain unity as the very watchword for our future. But that unity will not come under its own steam. It's a unity that we have to protect and to consolidate constantly, caring for it as we do at the same time for diversity, also Europe's cultural characteristic. Thank you very much for your attention.